Today we are going to be inspired by artist Sandra Silsberweg and we're going to be creating self-portraits. This is an image of our artist and these are some examples of some self-portraits she created. One thing you'll notice is that they are not realistic. We are going to be making abstract self-portraits today. Another special thing about our artist is that she has a condition called synesthesia. And this is a poem written by her explaining how she feels when she's creating art. I am a synesthesia goddess. I have no fear of color. It lives in my soul, dances in my heart, spills out of my fingers, flowing down a canvas. I can see your aura, taste the color black, feel the chill of the green wind smell blue butterflies, hear the yellow rain. Life is never boring when inspiration is always around. Synesthesia is a condition where the senses are kind of cross-wired. So you might, um, instead of just hearing a sound, you might hear a sound and see a color at the same time. Um, this is another couple of examples of Sandra's art. And um, we're going to be doing our own self-portrait and adding colorful designs that make it personal to us, just like she does in her art. If you're working from home and you do not have the glue or colorful chalk, another option would be to use paper crayons and then you and make a scratch art paper and then you can scratch off the designs rather than um, drawing them on with chalk like we're going to be doing. Okay. Okay, so today we're going to be creating our art inspired by Sandra Silverwig, and um, her art is abstract. It is not realistic. So uh, we're going to do some, some drawing first with our pencils. So you'll need your colored paper and a pencil, and I'm just going to start with the blue here. Um, and so the first step is to draw a straight line. We're going to do a, per make sure your paper is um, tall and not wide. We want it to be tall. And you're going to start at the top of your paper and make um, a line that comes down to about the middle. You can put a dot in the middle to guide yourself if you want to, or you can just draw straight down to that dot. Okay. Then we're going to go across, but we're only going to go about halfway. You can go as far as you want, but I'm only going to go about halfway between here and here, so I'm going to go there. Should look like you have a giant L. You guys can kind of see mine. And then you're going to go back up to the top. We're going to do a little bit smaller L. We want to have some space, though, because when you do glue, um, the glue can spread a little bit. So you don't want to put it too close. So I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure it's at least I can fit like my finger in between there. And be sure to stop before you get to the bottom line. If you didn't stop soon enough, you can always erase because you want to come across and then down. So these perpendicular lines and horizontal lines. Okay. You should have what looks like a big block L in the middle. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make some ellipses or elliptical shapes, which is like a football. And that's a curved line up and a curved line down. Sometimes it's easier to do this to, when you're starting out is to just make a straight line across and then go from one end of your straight line and curve up and then curve back down to that line. So I'm going to curve up and down. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. Curve down and then curve back up. So you should have a football shape there. If it, we could actually turn it into a football if we wanted to by just adding some, some lacing stitches. But we're not. We're going to make this the eye. So um, your eye has an iris, which is the colorful part. So to make that really big, because in Sandra's um, portraits, she uses a very big one. You could do a smaller one, but remember those, pe those glue lines you don't want them to be too close. So I'm going to do a curve here and a curve here to show where the iris or the colored part of the eye is and then a circle inside for the pupil. So that's the black part. And then you could do one straight across or I like it. I think it looks cool to maybe make it lower. So I'm going to do my next one down lower. I'm just going to draw my straight line across and then curve up and down then curve down and up. So I did the reverse. You can't see that one as well. There we go. Then we got to make our iris. So that's that 
curved line here and a curved line here. So it almost looks like it's this giant circle in here. And then for the pupil, I'm going to make a smaller circle right in the middle of that. There we go. So I've got a good start here. Now for the next part, you're going to just make a short line here to separate the two sides of the face. And then we're going to do the lips. Now, it's good to probably ghost to draw those to practice because this would be too small and this would be way too big. So maybe try practicing with your finger first. Your lips could just be a curved ellipse or you could have, I'm gonna make mine be like I'm going up and then come down right about where that ends. Then I'm gonna do the same thing, go up and come down. So it's almost like two little mountains there. Can I see those? And then a straight line underneath. Straight line. And then I'm going to do, like we did the bottom of this, we're going to do a curved line for the bottom of the lips. There we go. Then we're going to do another short line. That's going to be the bottom of my chin. And I'm going to start over here and just do a line that comes down to the bottom of the chin and then goes back up the other side. So you're basically drawing the bottom of your uh, face. Okay, now we need two lines for our neck. You may have a lot of space or not much space. I don't have a lot, but I'm gonna do two lines. You can make yours longer or shorter, depends on what you want. And we're all different artists, so we're gonna get different things, aren't we? So there's my neck and then shoulder lines. Just make those shoulder lines go straight out to the side because your shoulders would actually be probably out here, not in here, okay? Now, for the eyes, you could do um, a, a repeated or parallel line that goes to curves to make it look like maybe there's an eyebrow there, or you could do a zigzag line. Now, if you do zigzags, you gotta do them wide because if you do them too narrow, you won't be able to, uh, the glue likes to, to spread out, so you want those to be wide. If I were to do them really skinny, um, it would be very hard. The glue might just fill in that whole space and then I wouldn't have anything to color, okay? So there's a couple of things. You could do uh, a couple of lines going this way to suggest eyelashes if you wanted to, or this could suggest eyelashes because remember this is abstract. We can play around with that, okay? Um, that's all I'm gonna do for now. Your next step then is to take a black Sharpie, preferably a thick one, and trace each of your pencil lines with that Sharpie. Now the next step is to put our glue on. And I'm gonna be using clear glue, but you could use regular glue or glue that has some black paint added to it. We're gonna start by using a test piece of paper, and I just used scratch paper and wrote test paper on here. And I made a straight line and a wavy line because I want to practice on this before I start on this. So when you're using your glue, you don't wanna to squeeze too hard <clears throat> and you don't wanna to go too slow. If you go slow, you're gonna to get too much. If you squeeze too hard, you're gonna to get too much. So you wanna be able to just get a line of glue and then when you stop, tap it on the end. So I'm gonna, ooh, that's a lot. So that was a good practice. So you can see that I'm, it's bigger here. It got really skinny there. I don't know if you guys can see that. In the, see how it's not even? My goal is to get it to be a nice, smooth, even line. So you gotta keep moving along your line. Once you've done a little practice strip, then go to your paper and trace each of your lines with your glue. Okay, and you can see that anywhere I got off the line or maybe went too slow, it's spreading a little bit. That's okay, remember we're doing abstract art. So you're gonna have some of these things where um, it's thicker and thinner. Just do your best um, and remember that it is abstract, so it's okay if it isn't exactly um, the same thickness everywhere. This is our first time to do this and we're practicing. So when you are done, you're gonna put it on the drying rack to dry and we will do, uh, we will finish this project next week.
Okay, now that our glue has dried on our um, portraits, we're going to add some color. And I want you to be thinking about today focusing on analogous colors. So those are colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So whatever area you're coloring in, that section, I want you to focus on using analogous colors. So maybe you just use blue, light blue, and green, and you put them in there however you want. But I want you to experiment with blending. I want these to be smooth. So if I look at this, um, and can keep your color wheel in mind, they should be lined up in color if person before you put them away correctly. Um, so if I wanted to do an analogous color scheme in here of blues, I could use like green, this greenish blue, a turquoisey blue, and um, a darker blue. Those are analogous. They would be sitting right next to each other on the color wheel. Okay, so I'm going to try that right now. You can use the long flat side if you want to just color in a, a larger area, or you can use the tip. I think it's better to use the flat side for this part because we, we are going to blend these together. Um, if and, or when we get to the second part of this where we're adding some texture, that's when you're probably going to want to use the top edge. Okay. So you're going to have, oh, this is a messy business, um, probably keep a damp paper towel or a couple of paper towels beside you on the table. You're going to use a clean finger and blend your, or soften, so you're kind of blending or smoothing that into the paper. So you don't need a lot of chalk, you can just use a little, and then take your finger and make it look smooth. And then right when you get to the edge of the next color, you're going to just do a little bit of this so that they blend together. So maybe like little circular motions, then use a clean finger and move to the next color. Soften that up and then right along the edge, do that circular blending motion and clean finger. Smooth out this color and you should, it should just softly flow across. Um, it's, let's see, this was this finger. And a little blending there. Ooh. Experiment with different analogous color schemes within your picture. Okay, now that we've got everything colored in and we have a pretty smooth texture to everything, we've blended it well, we're going to add some line designs so to give it a little bit of texture. So we've got the smooth underneath layer and we're going to do line designs or dots. You can see I've done straight lines here, dots, swirls, some curls and swirls, even some diagonal lines kind of um, exploding there. You can do whatever you want. I want you to be thinking about all those different line designs that we practice all the time and repeat those somewhere in your um, portrait. Okay, So you want to, instead of doing colors that are next to each other, now I want you to pick colors that are across or a lot lighter. So if I'm doing it on the blues and I've got a dark blue here, I could use a light blue, I could use white, a cream color. So think of things that would contrast with the color you already have on there. <music> 